Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more on this. And to give us more insight, we have with us Dr. Adam Day, head of the Geneva Office of United Nations University Center for Policy Research from uh, Geneva. Thank you so much for joining us on We On Dr. Day. I don't know if you heard our correspondent Jody Cohen right now with her reporting. She said that the United States may be open to a a humanitarian pause. What was interesting is just a few days ago, the United States was one of the only countries who actually voted against something like this at the General Assembly. Do you see President Biden's support for Netanyahu and by extension Israel waning at any time soon? And then why is it that it would vote like that if it does want to see a humanitarian pause? Thanks, Susan. It's great to be here. And I think what you're really seeing is is a crisis point in, in the U.S. support for Israel here. And, and just this week in the General Assembly resolution, which passed with 153 votes in favor, it really shows this huge support for a ceasefire. And I think you may be seeing Biden coming in line with that um, sense of international momentum going towards at least some sort of pause. I think there is a difference between a pause and a ceasefire. And what we saw in mid-November was a pause. I think that's probably more within the U.S. comfort zone. I don't think that the text of the ceasefire that you see in the General Assembly this week or in the Security Council throughout November is what the U.S. is talking about. But it's worth noting how strong this support is for a ceasefire and more countries voted for a ceasefire in Gaza than voted to condemn Russia's aggression in Ukraine in March of last year. That's an extraordinarily high number. And I really think it has put Biden into this fairly uncomfortable position of, of needing to find some way to pressure Israel, given that that level of support. Yeah, Dr. Day, thank you so much for that nuanced point, because it seemed that the language this time on the U.N. General Assembly resolution was a lot stronger. And perhaps you're right. That's something that the United States wasn't comfortable with, nor was it the last time either. It, what's making headlines now? I don't know if you heard former President Barack Obama's aide, David Axelrod, has talked about dark, dark days for President Biden's reelection hopes. He's made this comments before, of course, but now it's in the midst of this Israel-Gaza war. And many believe that perhaps uh, many within President Biden's own party just don't agree with his policies when it comes to Israel. How much of this support waning, do you think, has to do with foreign policy, notably Israel? Well, there, there's the kind of famous phrase that foreign policy is just domestic policy. And I think that you certainly see Biden is, is different than much of the, the Democratic position on this domestically. But I do think that he's he's feeling the, the pressure to a certain extent. You see him sending very senior people to the region to try to find a way forward. I think this is part of his re-election campaign to a certain extent, and there certainly is a lot of American sentiment that matters mm -hmm. to him. Um, I think the, ch the challenge is, is that he isn't able to provide a package of issues that is going to satisfy Israel and move to what Jake Sullivan is talking about, which is that that timeline alignment. I think that there's a, a significant difference that we'll see later today in the timeline vision between the U.S. and Israel and in what's going to happen the day after. And I think that's the, the biggest challenge right now is for Biden to come up with mm -hmm. some sort of package that that moves us to the day after. Okay, well, thank you so much for that. We'll be watching very closely. Dr. Adam Day, head of the Geneva Office of United Nations University Center for Policy Research, joining us this morning from Geneva. Please do come back. Thanks so much, Susan. Good to be here.